Hi, welcome back to Living with Sjogren Syndrome and to part two of organizing your crafting space for your chronic illness and or chronic difficulties. Let's review real quick. Um, for those of you just tuning in, my name's Vicki McDonough. I have Sjogren's Syndrome. I also have an extremely messy craft room that trips me up all the time because I don't really have it set up in such a way that truly works around my chronic issues. And so, as I take on this project, I want to take you with me, because I know I'm not the only one with this dilemma. So, let's review. Last time, um, in part one, we talked about having a plan, a written plan, and developing a why of what you want to accomplish. Um, but for just a minute, let's, um, let's review and further define what I mean by chronic difficulties. Um, so these are things that you live with that make activities of daily living just harder for you. Um, where, and maybe at one time they weren't an issue for you in the past, but now are for one reason or another. But just what worked in the past didn't work, it doesn't work anymore because your body has changed, um, maybe you're older and you have aging issues or you're younger and you've been diagnosed with uh, an autoimmune disease or MS. I think MS is an autoimmune disease as well. Or maybe um, EDS. EDS is rare. I think it's basically rare. But I think it's also very undiagnosed and it is very hard to live with and creates a lot of obstacles for folks. But there are other chronic illnesses and chronic difficulties too, like having um, a pulmonary condition or a condition or disease that affects your breathing and your lungs. Um, yeah, uh, so that's what I mean by chronic illness or chronic difficulty. Something that you live with um, that is going to affect you for the rest of your life to some degree. But also something temporary. Maybe you're going through cancer treatment and you're on chemo and you, know, you still want to create some or you still want to have a space that... Um, where you can do things that are meaningful to you, but the space where you used to do them doesn't work out because of how your physical um, body has changed and what your current limitations are. Chemotherapy wipes people out and um, it causes a lot of brain fog. So there are many, many people who would benefit from reorganizing their space in a functional way that's functional for them personally. And I want to take you with me and encourage you and help others along the way. And if you have tips and tricks to share with me, definitely put those in the comments and I will work those in because I want everybody to be able to benefit. Um, so here's an example. Um, I used to have all the energy to do whatever I wanted without any consequences, even working like 12 hour shifts or double shifts. I could lift heavy items, I could jog, I could remember details, I was able to achieve good grades when I went back to school for nursing, uh, but all of that changed by mid 2012. <laughs> I had a, a, a bad, flare. I don't know if you could call it a flare, but a point at which my disease became much worse. And from 2012 on, I've gone way downhill with my energy level, and that's at a baseline level. So things that I 
that slow me down now are chronic fatigue, um, not being able to go and go and go. Uh, there's a limit, and that limit's always changing. Uh, brain fog, sight issues. I lost peripheral, all this peripheral vision in my left eye. And then my vision, even with glasses, is always blurry because my eyes are always dry. So I'll put eye drops in and things are still a bit blurry. Then there's a point at which they're okay. And then because they're dry again, I can't see clearly. So I drop things. I smack into things. I need things to be at a glance right in front of me where they're reachable, where I can see them. So my needs have changed a lot to the point where just functioning in the normal craft room environment, workroom environment, doesn't work for me. I need large print and just large screen and, you know, for computer work and that sort of thing. So my space needs to be tailored to my needs. And I know that you can um, relate. Uh, many, many people can relate to that. Well, it is frustrating, which is why we're doing this. And we need change. So in part one, I recommended writing a plan uh, with your why at the top. And I gave you my why. In part two, I will guide you to write out what it is that you want and turn that into your why. Uh, your why will help you plan according to what you want um, to accomplish. It also helps others who are helping you so that they don't sort of assert their own desires or expectations or their own whys onto you to do, to do those things in your space. Um, it'll help them focus on what's going to be helpful for you rather than what they think is going to be helpful for you. Um, and um, so we need your space to be tailored to you. Um, and that's great to have help. We all need that. But our helpers need to understand that what works for them isn't necessarily what works for us. And so basically your why is a statement of what you want. Um, maybe you're trying to fix something that doesn't work for you, like me. Okay, so why? To be more productive, uh, to have more joy, to grow closer to the Lord maybe, um, or to earn better grades, maybe have a more consistent prayer life, um, just to have more satisfaction. Um, your reason will end up being very different from mine, but it'll be very meaningful for you. So stating what you want in a statement and posting it where you can see it can really help to empower a person, um, especially in an environment like this where it's a mess and things are not organized, suited to what works for a person. Um, we get lost in the chaos. Just looking at the entire mess from the doorway makes a per can make a person just want to turn around and walk out and go, uh-uh, I'll do it another day. Um, so as you get lost in the chaos of the mess, your why can help to rein you in. Okay, so let's, first of all, find out what it is you want. Think about it. And then write out your statement, I want fill in the blank. It can be short, it can be long, just fill in the blank. I want, and then fill in the blank. When you're done with that, underneath that put because, and then fill in the blank. Because why? So now I'm going to show you images of my craft room and my barriers as I sort of talk you through a few steps that helped me. If these steps don't work for you, skip them. <laughs> Do what works for you. So think about what it is you want and close your eyes. Think about your current barriers and obstacles. Um, then open your eyes and look at the space. Look at what's in it. 
Then again, close your eyes and remove everything. Picture a completely empty space, just as it is, but without anything in it. Now picture yourself moving around in that space or the room or the area according to the way you are now and the way you normally move and do things. Physically, mentally, emotionally, the current abilities that you have and the way that your body moves, sees, hears, and becomes inspired. Try not to think to make yourself imagine a certain way. Just go for it. Just close your eyes and daydream about yourself working and doing in the space. Now open your eyes again. What did the space appear like to you? Um, as you picture yourself crafting, what did it look like? Was there anything in the space? What was in your hands? What were you doing? Um, were you praying? Were you doing Bible study? Were you knitting? Were you typing on a computer? Were you reading through a book and highlighting things? Um, whatever it is you were doing. Um, now look again at your current space and what's in it. How can that current space and the current items be changed to resemble the images in your mind? What could be changed? Would you be able to clear off surfaces or would you need to clear off surfaces or move obstacles, move furniture, move chairs? What would you need to do to that room the way it is in order to make it like the one you pictured in your mind? What would it take? Would it take a much, much bigger budget? Would it take a whole team of hefty helpers? Or would it just need you and some slow bit by bit changes? All these things matter, that they need to be included into your plan. Next, draw out what your space might look like with the changes that you think that you can make slowly over time or with a lot of help. When sketching out my design or the image that I sort of had in my head, I didn't worry about being like a super sketch artist. I found that drawing shapes was most helpful. Since my room is a rectangle shape, I just drew a big rectangle. I noted where the doorway was and then I used other shapes to place around the room or in the, in the big rectangular box in order to match the image in my head. I used rectangles, um, squares, triangles, circles, ovals, all different kinds of shapes. So for different types of um, projects, say like a corner of a room, or a specific wall of a room, or a shelf that's along a wall of a room. For the shelf, I would draw the shape of the shelf. If it's a rectangular shape, I would draw a large rectangle, and then I would draw lines um, horizontally where the different parts of the shelf are and different shelves. Um, if it's the corner of a room, I would draw a large triangle with a line from the top point down to the middle of the bottom, the base of the triangle. Um, and then I would use shapes and I would, I would um, separate out the different parts of the, of the corner that would be a shelf or any, anything, any kind of piece of furniture that's gonna go in the corner I would just draw those out where you want them to be. It could even be something hanging on the wall. Um, and my first thought was somebody who maybe is going through chemo might want to create a corner area next to their bed that's easy to reach. And um, 
you could use a dressing table that's corner shaped or small like a, a bedside table. You could even put hooks on the wall and hang like an over the door type hanger, um, but just hang it on the hooks. Something that has pockets that are easy for you to reach to put your mouth spray, your eye drops, um, a water bottle, your book, your pens or markers, or your phone, or your phone charger, a heating pad, or even um, something that you can put around your neck. All the items that you might need. That's something that you can draw out with shapes as well. So don't stress about the um, sketching out the shape, but if you have a visual plan to follow, that helps a lot too. So that's the end of part two. Thank you so much for hanging out with me for the whole thing. I really hope that you've gotten something out of this to help you or that you've at least gotten super encouraged and energized for your project ahead. I know that you can do it. Ask for help. Bye for now.